intensity. Unless we really freed up our car more to run on the inside, yeah. I haven't noticed a gain. Frustration. Let's go. We're gonna run out of time for you. The elation. <laughs> Golly. The emotional roller coaster of an Indy racing weekend. For Scott Sharp, enduring these ups and downs is just part of the job in the quest for the Northern Light Cup. Racing comes back to Atlanta Motor Speedway with high hopes. Coming off an exhilarating victory at Texas and standing third in the points, the Delphi Automotive team is set to defend its title at Atlanta. You start doing well and it gets addicting. And you, know, you get yourself up into the championship, you start thinking about championship. You know, your, your goalposts move. And what's nice this year for me is I'm a very uh, driven, intense, competitive person and I finally have a crew around me that's the same way. We're so intense bunch of guys that we expect to, to do good, and when you don't do good, you end up uh, feeling disappointed. This time around, however, things go wrong from the outset. We gotta get it back. We just gotta get up, Tony. What we'll do, we'll get it back, we'll see yeah. what it is. If, if I have an engine ready to go. See them doing engine right. changes with suspension, you guys, that's your call. So, Okay, I need, I need that 7.16 uh, foot for that dog. No, 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 here, you need to pull this off first. This one, and then that line, oh, yeah, yeah. and that's it. We had a little bit of an oil leak that developed. Uh, the guys, the crew's a pretty snapshot. They're always on it, and they, they, they saw it developing, and it just seemed to get worse and worse. We didn't want to take a chance, obviously, of uh, a main seal blowing while we're out there and put us in the wall. So we guys decided to bring it back, and we got to uh, take the gearbox off the car to uh, be able to get in there to see if they can something they can fix real quick or whether we we'll have to change the engine. It's no big deal. We can either fix this car, and that was the decision whether we fix this car or we change some suspension components from our backup car, but we're just trying to make a decision which way to go. And if we can fix this seal problem we've got, we'll be ready to go for the next session and we'll be fine. Hey, make sure that the tank has water in it before you start it up. Uh, there was an uncertainty of whether it was the rear main seal. Uh, I made the decision to go ahead and change the motor because there was no guarantee that the rear main seal was leaking. We couldn't 100% verify it. So uh, I chose that at this time. Valuable track time is lost. Is there anything different about this car than before we changed the engine? No, 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 we didn't change anything. We, uh, we weren't that fast then either. We're down on speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big time. Guys can run 2099 and we're 206s. Yeah. We're sucking. No contact in the rear as of yet. Okay. So we okay. can still bring it down if you need yeah. some more uh, stable stability. Okay. Yeah. We, we also bring the pressure, uh, tire pressure up, we were really low, okay. and uh, that might uh, drag the, the car a little bit more. Strategy shift quickly. With little time to sort out qualifying setups, the team concentrates on getting the car ready for the race. Our Texas race motor or no? This was your Texas race motor, yeah. I was pretty happy with that motor there. Yeah? Not only because we won, but I mean it ran good. Well, when it helps. I asked for it, actually. Well, now you got it. Oh, maybe it wasn't a good call. Maybe it wasn't a good call. After struggling with engine problems all day Thursday, Friday brings different challenges. Man, it's interesting. Everyone's trying to run a low line. Ah. Goodyear comes off two, yeah. driving down the middle of the road. By the time he gets three quarters of the way down, he's on the inside of the racetrack. Goes into turn one on the bottom. Or turn three, I should say, on the bottom. Okay. I've done it, and unless we really freed up our car more to run on the inside, yeah. I haven't noticed the gain. Yeah. What I'm saying is if I drove it in, if it was well balanced in an outside line and I went to the inside line without increasing, uh, you would think you'd tighten the car up. Uh -huh. You know, that's what I would think. Yes. And if yeah. I added more scrub to the car, therefore I wouldn't think it would be any faster. But it hasn't really felt like I've added a lot of scrub, but I haven't gained any speed. At that point, I think you say, okay, hey, we're just going to work on our race car when we've got the track time to do it, make the best situation you have. And what's nice about the IRL races is you have 
pit stops, you know, three or four pit stops to work on the car, make it better if it isn't just optimum going into the race. And certainly, you know, with Kelly Racing, we've got a great team. Uh, you know, Delphi cars run really strong and a lot of other mile and a half. So you know pretty much you're going to have a car that's somewhat close. Okay, Josh, let's go for start. Speed eludes Sharp's half of the Kelly effort. Time to look to teammate Mark Dismore for help. I wonder if Diz is pushing me, helps me go faster. Yeah, yeah. Seems to me, Scotty, we got either less grip and you're sliding, or you got more drag somewhere in the car through downforce or something. Hey, guys, let's go ahead and get them ready for all four uh, springs, please. Hold on, we're not changing the right height? We just go with that? Okay. The most important right. thing is if we qualify 15th and we got right. a car that can work in the draft, we'll get there. I agree. And if we screw around trying to get a half an hour mile an hour here, a quarter mile an hour there, and never work on the race car. Get there, Jack Juan, ready? Let's get him on the ground. Even with different setups, the number eight car can't crack the top ten. We wanted to run. It was easy up in the 11 on the back straightaway. The thing is, we, we went back to where we started. We didn't really get anything. Yeah. And, uh, and what, what, what about the non softer? I don't know. Did I don't think get... it went any faster. No, I mean, it felt maybe a little more placeable. It felt like it maybe slid a little bit less, but I seemed to run an easy 206 yeah. and a half to a high 206 and a half the other way. Yeah. And, you know, after three or four laps, I'm at a 206 one. Yes. So I think it was just that much of a step slower. Yes. All we're doing was we're taking a motor, changing the motor, yeah, right. using the same gearbox, same suspension, and, uh, and when we put it on the pad, the numbers came in. Let's check. I just want to see what it's done. Oh, yeah, 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 by all means. But right. if, you, yeah. if, if something was radically changed, we would have spotted it on the pad. We need to put their setup on our car. I agree. Done. The unique thing about racing is no matter how much you test at racetracks, you can almost guarantee yourself that when you go back for the actual weekend of the race, the weather's different, track conditions are different, and somehow your car is going to behave a little bit differently. So uh, you've got to be able to adjust and adjust quickly. As qualifications approach, the Delphi team is no closer to the lead pack. We're a team accustomed to running up front. Frustration. Now my thought is, if we're pretty good here, yeah. let's get a read on the race car. Yes. So I'll go run 10 laps or something behind people. Yes. And then we're done yeah. with race stuff, right? Okay. Okay. That, that's all the change. Uh, okay, don't worry about the comment, okay? I'm off, guys. Yes. All right. If you feel we're getting pressed for time and, you know, we want to spend a fair amount of qualifying, call me in. Roger. I'll talk to Alon and I'll just call you in when we feel like yeah. we, you know, depends on the traffic situation and how you feel too, yeah. Scotty. Okay. As soon as you get a read, call us. I will. I'm off. Uh, Scott's input is probably the most important of the whole uh, package because without his input, really, uh, it's a guessing game. So he's the one that's driving it. He needs to feel the car, and uh, and then Alon makes the the uh, key changes out there, and, uh, and then we, uh, as the mechanics, make the changes according to what Alon wants and the driver. Apprehension permeates the Kelly camp. After working the remedy a myriad of problems, Sharp and Company still aren't on the front page. One ace and all, Scotty, is we, we got this business info. From what standpoint? From what he's doing right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a benefit to him running well is that we can get all that information. Yeah, we just don't have a lot of time to go try it ourselves, but yeah. Maybe we should send someone over and see if they've learned anything. We are removed the tunnel gurney now. All right, I'm going to go try to find some traffic. Okay. Wouldn't hurt to run yeah. down just a little bit to get an idea of speed. Yep. Yeah. We're going to make a couple little changes, Scotty. How much fuel's in the car? 25 this time. We started with 25, but we're going to run you down yeah, a little don't bit. Don't put any in it. We're, we may never get down. Yeah, we're at 19.7 right now. Yeah. All the island we'll be okay. We're not going to put any fuel on it, Scotty. All clear, buddy. All clear. wing in our car. We're not sure how much we need. And we just got to go out there, hold it down, drive as smoothly as you can, exact every ounce of speed out of the car. Now we're pretty happy. We're trying to, uh, we're, we're playing it pretty conservative. We had some little difficulty in the last couple sessions, so we want to be conservative, but uh, try to stay up in the top five, top seven. The Connecticut native in the back straight in the Delphi Automotive Systems Delara setting up for turn three. Scott Sharp, five times he has won in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series. Sharp off of turn number four. He will qualify for his 36th Indy Racing League event. A gutsy performance by team and driver. 
The team is happy with the effort and will settle for starting from the 13th position. After what we went through with uh, the engine changes and so forth to get Scotty back out and have a good car, we made, you know, if we end up top five or six spots, that'll be pretty good. So we're happy with that. And uh, our objective is to win the championship. And if we win a race or two between now and the end of the year, in our goal to win the championship, more power to it. We took a gamble on some changes and uh, they paid off for us. Uh, that's racing. Sometimes you have to take those gambles, especially when you're uh, behind the eight ball and uh, it paid off for us. The final practice session is the breakthrough the Delphi entry has strived for all week. Second quick on the speed chart. Things look promising for race day. We didn't have a car, we had a Texas, I'll say that. Well, we had a fast car that last session in Texas. Can you drive anywhere you want? Pretty much, yeah. I can animate it. When I go up high, I lose a little bit of grip. You know, the tracks are dirty up there, and I feel like it slides a little bit. So we're full soft in the front yeah. car. Should we go down in the front car? And, and you said you, said you went to full soft in the front car? Yes. So maybe we should go the next bar down. We check if I'm full soft in the front bar, Robert. Nice. Maybe we should go to full the next bar down and put it the same <coughs> setting so we can go either way. We really ought to. Yeah. yeah. All right. I hated going Steve. stiff on the rear bar. Just, yeah. It did this to the car. Yeah. Okay. yeah I just yeah. wanted to see. It always does. All right. It didn't feel like it wanted you. What's that? It was fine till I got up high on a guy and I was in his wake and I tried to bring it down because I wanted to go like that to him. Yeah, right. And it went, woo, woo. The yeah, right. rears aren't really working. <laughs> and I felt like it was a soft ball because it felt like there was some weird roll going on up there. Mm -hmm. right. But I didn't like the movement in the car. Right. How about the tire pressure change? How did that? That, that helped. I like that. Mm -hmm. The shock change you made all the way around was a good change. I like that. Yeah, okay. Um, I wonder if you want to go one step. Face to the little bit, you can do it. Is that or the sprint? Oh, is that right? Yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, you're going to have to run up high. Yeah. If anything else we do is probably going to slow us down more. Yeah. We went or something. Mm -hmm. It's going to slow us down even more. <laughs> A muggy summer day in Georgia greets fans and participants. Meanwhile, indoors, preparations for the next event are already in the works. And I'm preparing a program to uh, calculate the, the next step, which is a test we will have uh, next week. So even at the racetrack, it takes whatever time you get to plan it. All ahead. the time I can find. I never stop. <laughs> Reminder uh, to keep the revs up and, uh, you know, and, uh, just Break. give you a little tip. Okay. Sharp says the number eight can move up through traffic quickly. Time to find out. And here they come side by side. Greg Ray, Eliseo Salazar. Green flag is out and we're underway. Greg Ray and Salazar side by side as they hit into turn number one, the shaded portion of the racetrack. Still side by side in turn number two, Jerry Baker. And the guys have said they can run side by side. The track is lighter and it's smooth. And right down on the inside of the white line is Greg Ray. Salazar's about to have a car left behind him. Got a car slowing on the back screen, babe. And then we have it is directly in front of me right now, and it's uh, it's number eight. It's Scott Sharp. Sharp appears to be coming into the pit area. Well, so Scott Sharp, a guy that we really anticipated to have a great run here tonight, maybe out of the running early. Sharp's race is over as soon as it starts. That's no gearbox. There's no gearbox, guys. I went to upshift it. I don't know. It won't grab a gear at all. Try to get into the pit, Scotty. I'll take a look at it. Bring it into the pits this time around. I think he thought he had it back up to speed, Mike, but it is not, so he'll be into the pits for the first time. A faulty gearbox puts the Delphi car on pit road after one lap. Again, priorities shift. Went to shift the next gear, and suddenly there's no gear. So try to shift again, no gear. So then you downshift, so you got to do something to get the car, find the gear somewhere, and found you know the gear I had just been in, which at that point was third gear. And um, you know, it can only run an effort a while before you need to shift again. So we had a problem. We were missing um, anything above really third gear. I think I finally got into sixth gear, but that wasn't going to work. Um, and by then, the, the gears just started beating up the whole uh, gearbox. And uh, they, they saw in the pits through the telemetry, they could see the pressures were going down. It would only have been a few more laps before the entire gearbox blew up. So it was time to come in and, hey, you know, at that point, you're like, I can't believe this is happening. Why is this happening? The race day was a big disappointment. Um, 
All I can say is that, you know, we, we, we strive to, to be perfect and sometimes there's some things that is out of your, uh, out of your hands and you just have to, you know, accept it and, um, and learn from it. I guess that's the big key is learn from the mistakes and uh, move on and try to make the best, best for the next race. They're not sure, but they're thinking it might be a fuel pressure problem. It just dropped all of a sudden on Scott Sharp. Not going to be a contender here tonight. They have shut that car off, and they're working here in the rear of the car. We take a look at the point standings coming into this event. You just heard Mark James say that Scott Sharp was not going to be a factor. A big shame for him. He came into the night trailing Eddie Cheever by just 17 points. And Doug Rice, he talked like a guy at the start of this race that thought he was going to be able to come out of here with the points lead. Scott Sharp, the defending race champion. Problems early on. He thought he could pick up his second title. Scott Sharp's crew right now looks as though they're ready to take the gearbox off the rear of the car. So apparently it was not a fuel pressure problem after all. There's a problem with the rear end of the car around the area of the gearbox. And again, it looks like Scott Sharp's night is done. They are going to try to get him back in the race because they're battling for the points championship. And every little bit helps. So they're going to do their best to get Scott back in the race. The guy, Delphi guys did a fabulous job changing the box. I mean, to do that and only lose 20 laps is pretty incredible. Usually you park it in the garage and you go home with 28th place points, which are zero. Instead, we were able to, to keep going and get as many points as we could. The team replaces the gearbox. Sharp returns to action 20 laps behind the leaders. What's the thought on uh, what happened to us? Some parts in the gearbox just shattered. Scotty, there's nothing you can do about it. It's one of those things that's cracked the gearbox, and uh, it's a good thing we fitted when we did or it all comes apart. You roll out of the pitch, you're like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, uh, you don't really want to get in the way, yet you don't want to be sitting there half throttle around all night. There's no sense doing that, so I just chose to run as hard as I could. But my program here is I'm going to race like I don't want people to pass me unless you call me and tell me that they want me to let people buy. Otherwise, you just sit around here cruising all day, let people buy you all day. Over 150 laps remain. The number eight Kelly entry now has a dual mission, gaining as many championship points as possible and aiding teammate Dismore as he chases leader Greg Ray. And Diz is coming up behind you. When Diz gets to you, pull over and let it by. As the race unfolds, evidence of what could have been is revealed. Sharp easily runs with the leaders. Although he's still many laps back at the front runners, the number eight continues to race. Draft off of you if he can, so run hard and let him pull behind you. He wants to follow you if he can when he gets to you. Helping Dismore catch Ray becomes paramount. The number 28, however, cannot overtake the green machine, the defending Indy racing champion. It could be better if my main race goes all the way around. Stay low, stay low. Outside, still working. Outside. There, outside. Outside. Let him clear, buddy. Stay down there. You got Dismore coming. Outside. Outside. He's coming. Let him through. I'll let this go. A little push, Scotty. Give him a little push. Get up positions. You're currently 21st, but you'll pick up some more buzzes out, and you're going to gain him in a little bit here. Dismore in front of you, then a couple of slower cars. We don't want to pit at the end of this thing, do we? Would we be able to go to the finish, maybe? Well, uh, we're looking at it. Hang on. Uh, we're looking on the pit stop just a minute. Right, we pit now. We're going to Scotty, it doesn't do us any good on uh, fuel mileage. So how far can we go? Three to four laps to one yellow. Three to laps to one yellow. We can go 51 laps. We've got uh, 67 to go. 10 four. Unless you think there might be another yellow. What do we got to lose? Might be a chance for us to gain a couple laps back. You're right there with Mark. You might be able to help him out. That's why I don't want to give you away. Dismore's day ends suddenly with a blown engine. Yo, 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 Mark, you're smoking. You're smoking. Slow down. Slow down, buddy. Slow down. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. So Mark Dismore, who was running in third place, has lost an engine. Mark Dismore is probably, well, he may make it back into the pit, but his day is done. Now Sharp is racing for championship points only. Is anybody a... Uh, Close enough proximity lap-wise? Uh, not really, but you will, you will, by finishing the race, pick up a minimum of two more spots and uh, could pick up some more just depending on what happens to everybody else. Dude, take it easy on the engine. We got a little bit of a low oil pressure. Just take it easy on the engine and get, get to the end of the race. Get out of it. Six 
gear, six gear. With just a few laps to go, he eases the Delphi car into the pits and climbs out. What could have been a catastrophic blow to the championship chase actually yields a 16th place finish. Not bad after the hardships of the past three days. I went to ship and there was no gear. You should see it. It blew up. I mean, it, how would it blow up like that? Well, I asked him. He said it was faulty parts. So that's the only really? thing. He said you didn't miss shift. They checked no, I, all that. Didn't that. We're here to win the championship, and, and a couple points here or there at the end of the season could really make a difference. And you know, we came in on that first lap when Scotty's gearbox blew up and uh, fixed it and got him. He was 25th at that time, and he ended up 16th tonight. So we picked up nine spots, and somebody said it was worth 17 points to, to get him back out there and finish where he did. And he, I think he got some good exposure for the sponsors because he was up there with the leaders as fast as they were, you know, most of the race. So at the end, we had a little bit of a low oil pressure problem, and I didn't want to risk it, and I brought him in. and. So uh, we were happy with the finish, considering what happened to us. It did not go for uh, you know good for us for the whole weekend, and um, it was disappointing. You know, we we are so intense bunch of guys that we expect to, to do good, and when you don't do good, you end up uh, feeling disappointed. Of course, at the end, because you you know losing the 45 minutes or an hour uh, is track time lost for the driver, and uh, especially chasing conditions, that's you know a big factor. Something that drivers start to learn more and more, and I think as I mature, I'm learning more, is you got to keep a smile on your face. you got to keep all the guys around you pumped up that, hey, we're going to dig through this. We'll do the best that we can do with whatever adversity is shown to us. And uh, that's what I tried to do all weekend. It's hard sometimes. You're so competitive. You know you've, you've got the wherewithal here with the Delphi team to be uh, the number one car out there and it's, it's, it drives you crazy when there's something outside of your control that takes that away. I think it drives everyone else the same. So, but you gotta just try to keep everyone pumped up and say, hey, um, the, the key to winning a championship is dealing with adversity and, and being as consistent as possible. And if that means go out and finish 16th when maybe we should have been finishing parked in the garage in 28th, but hey, we get an extra 10 or 15 points, that's what we need to go do. It's been a very, very tough weekend for both crews and uh, that's racing, you know, we, we got to go on to Kentucky and try to win and, and Mark and Scott can still, you know, contend for the championship and we want to finish as well as we can. For Scott Sharp and Kelly Racing, it's on to the next event. The Northern Light Cup and its million dollar prize are still within reach.